obviously, uh, you know, the second half I felt we got too, too lax, too soft on the ball at times and allowed them to get some confidence going, specifically from three, hit some tough shots, Hawkins banked in one or two. Um, but I just think we didn't, we didn't have a, an edge to us defensively, and they came out and made some plays uh, to start the half. But that eventually we we got better there defensively. I think they told me we had eight straight stops in a row. They get one point in the last five possessions and, and made enough plays down the stretch to be able to, to finish it off. So, um, you know, a lot of good things, some better things defensively than maybe we were the other night um, or the other day um, against Indiana. Um, I thought we were pretty good defensively the first half. You know, made threes really hard. Second half, like I said, we just didn't have a, the same bite to us to start the half and, and gave them some confidence. And you know they're going to make a run. I mean, they're at home and it's a, it's a you know rivalry game and all that that goes to it. But um, enough plays down the stretch with AJ getting to the foul line and Tyler sealing it off there, and then uh, for the most part executing the last four or five seconds okay. Um, that we fouled maybe a little too early on the fifth, sixth team foul um, when they were in the backcourt. Um, and then obviously uh, need to block out the shooter when we're uh, in that situation on the one-on-one. But life on the road is not easy in this league, so um, you find a way to get them done, and you learn from what you did well, and you learn from what you didn't do well, and move on to the next one. Right. Questions? Sorry. Yeah. You, you talked about uh, you know there were some pretty good things defensively. Obviously, Tyler led you guys in scoring, but what stood out about some of his efforts on, on Garcia? I guess I'd ask about some of Nolan's as well and some of the spot minutes. Yeah, I thought I thought all four breaks were good. Gilmore and Winter and, and Steve too, even though when he got the two fouls early. Um, you know, to have Garcia ten points on ten shots and same thing with Payne, nine points on ten ten shots, that that's good. We've I thought we did a good job of walling up for the most part. Um, didn't put him to the free throw line. Um, you know, after those first couple early in the in the first half when Payne got there. Um, we didn't put Garcia there at all. He, the one he shot was on the Class B technical. So, um, you know, I thought we did a, a, a good job. We were conscious of that, um, and we, but we also knew that when they've been better, they've knocked down threes. And first half, we we were better with that. Second half, I didn't think we were as good early, and, and they got some momentum going. You mentioned the defensive. I know it's just one play, but you're down two, and Minnesota got the ball. You address the importance of yeah, the steal and then the throw ahead. To, yeah, I mean, he's just active. I didn't, I didn't think he was, you know, he's been on such a tear offensively that people forget really he's, you know, a tough nosed defender first and foremost and um, just made plays when we needed him. I mean, that's the mark of a good team when you're not maybe in sync or not playing well or a team's got some momentum going and a little mojo on you, you got to find ways to tip it and, and turn the tide. And, and that was a big play. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like the help defense though tonight at the rim, especially, I guess, stayed, you know, poised and controlled even after one of those threes? Could yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, you know, the one of them. There's a multitude of things that happened. We lost either Carrington or uh, Mitchell in the corner once on dribble penetration. Um, you know, I think we we wanted to try to handle, you know, as much of the ball screen and dribble penetration with Hawkins, with Chucky, and with whatever guard had him, and then the bigs kind of and not knowing that we can't come too far off some shooters specifically as we got into that second half and they were banging down some threes but um you know I think there's you know it's a it's a double edged sword there if you're talking a lot about the the uh, you know the playing the paint and what Payne and and Garcia specifically have done up to this point and how good they've been um <clears throat> but again looking through some film and really studying the stats that the threes were a concern for us that we we had to take away the post, but we also had to make sure you know they didn't go bananas from three because when they have they've they've played really well and second half first and second half were obviously a tale of two different halves. On that last uh, offensive possession, I guess you felt good about going to any of the five guys you had on the floor, but what, what maybe specifically was the reason you went to AJ when you know, missed his last couple shots? Looked like he was forcing some stuff. You know, yeah, was, you're talking about off the side out of bounds. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just you know. I, I think he's he's got size. He's got explosiveness. Um, you know, I think he's been in those positions before, and he, you know, he wants the ball. Um, 
and if he didn't have it, he was, you know, we were going to pull it back out and run something else or get to a, a better shot. But the initial chance to try to get him downhill was what we were trying to look for. Greg, I know you did only have 10 free throw attempts tonight, but you converted 80% in yeah. Minnesota struggle. How much has the edge of that ability at the free throw line given this team? Oh, it's, it's been huge and, and no bigger than the last two. You know, with Tyler Wall, who's, you know, you know the last couple of years has struggled from there and go there and to put us, you know, to put us in that position to, to uh, close it out or get us a, another possession ahead was big. And now I don't have to be consumed as much about who's in the game, who's not, because we've, we've shot the line pretty consistently well. How pleased are you after AJ made the mistake hanging on the rim, I guess, him to go out and kind of make the right play, I guess? Right. Yeah, I mean, it's, I guess I didn't, I didn't know hanging on the rim and trying to dunk the ball was a Class B technical. I've, I've never been in that position myself. So, again, hang on the rim, let alone try to dunk it while you're hanging there. So, I learned something tonight. But I also educated the officials in the first half that the shot clock thing, when it was a point three, cannot catch and shoot. And they had to go check the rule book at halftime. And I was, I was correct in what I was telling them in the mm -hmm. first half. Point three, a catch should have been shot, but they had to tip it point three and lower. So. At least I know I've studied my rules. No ladders and platforms as well from hanging? No, we used to have to jump off the wall on Cobb. We have to jump off the brick wall of the school and then jump backwards and try to dunk. That's how you get your elevation. Do you need to win? Does a team need to win games like this? Any team that's vying for a, cha a championship? <coughs> yeah, I think, you know, I. I wasn't, even though we, we won on Friday night, I wasn't real happy with our second half defensively. How we just kind of, and tonight we, we buckled down and we got better, you know, when we needed to. So that just shows me that, that we can. Now, as I've told them many times, we got to put it, got to put it all together, you know. <coughs> Excuse me. You got to put it all together for 40 on both ends of the floor. So. How much can that mean for this team going forward, coming into this type of environment, <coughs> getting in one of these, you know, clawed out games? Yeah, it's it's you know one of the, the closer games we've had. You know, last year we were in so many, and this year we haven't been in that many. So to be able to again give up a lead on the road, claw back, withstand the the, the full throatedness of of this place and the fans, um, and come back and find a way to win. That's that's. You know, you have to be able to win games when maybe you're not at your best, I think, as you go through a season, just because the season's too long. So find different ways to win. And um, like I said, good teams always find when they're not quite clicking or in sync at their best on either end of the floor, they find a way to get it done. And that just tells you the fortitude and grit that this group ha has internally. How much does Tyler Bryan games like this that kind of scrap towards the end? Yeah, I mean, he's very versatile, so, you know, I thought he did a great job of, you know, making Garcia really have to work for catches, um, you know, and he's really efficient. He goes six for seven, you know, um, from the floor. So it's just a really efficient game, I, I felt. But defensively, the versatility, because he can get in the switch. If we have to switch a ball screen, he's there. A couple possessions he switched and switched back, you know, it, within the same possession uh, when they were doing some of the high ball screen stuff. So just the versatility and mobility of him. And obviously he's experienced, you know, he's been in, he's been in a lot of these battles. So he, he stays calm and, and was saying the right things in the huddles when they were making that run, when they were banging threes. And uh, our, our experience in our upperclassmen, I think really vocally grabbed onto this, you know, when that was going on, Klesman was very vocal, Chucky was very vocal and Tyler, obviously um, to, we had to, we had to turn that around and not let them keep playing off that momentum they had.